the Field Notes with Rob and Chris. I'm Chris Buccini, and we're filming at Wilma's on Market Street in downtown Wilmington, Delaware. And I'm Rob Buccini. Today, we're joined by some of Wilmington's best and brightest chefs and restaurateurs. Next up, we're joined by Tyler Aiken, executive chef and partner at Le Cab at the Green Room, and Jimmy Sparks, executive chef of Wilma's and Maker's Alley and culinary director of food and beverage at our company, BPG. A fellow native of Wilmington, Delaware, Tyler Aiken, spent most of his childhood in the kitchen admiring his Southern grandmother. Tyler went to law school, but left to pursue a culinary career, in, and in 2012, he accepted a position at the world-renowned Zahab in Philadelphia. Two years later, Tyler branched out on his own to open his own stock in Fishtown, and two years later, Tyler fulfilled a dream of helming the kitchen at Le Cavalier at the iconic Hotel du Pont. Jimmy's a 22-year industry veteran and uh, started his career in Philadelphia uh, at the Philadelphia Restaurant School. And ironically, Jimmy, I think you're the new guy on the block here, <laughs> Apparently literally, so. figur literally and figuratively on the blocks of Market Street, uh, you and, uh, and Tyler. Um, and the thing that both of you all have in common is that you've opened restaurants that have exclusively only operated during COVID. So you opened <laughs> and operated restaurants. We did have Maker's Alley, uh, one of my favorite uh, architectural settings in, uh, in, this, in the state of Delaware. Um, but uh, uh, I mean, the, I think the, the thing that's so exciting as we enter into March of 2022 with uh, COVID clearly receding now, I think the potential for the restaurants that you all have uh, operated under such uh, extraordinary circumstances. Really gonna be interesting to see how things, you know, now really accelerate. Uh, this past weekend, I think we're extraordinarily busy and, and that's a trend that we've seen in the last uh, several weeks. So uh, maybe Tyler, we'll start with you, kind of how, how did you ever open a restaurant in the middle of the pandemic? Um, and then, you know, kind of what do you see as this hopefully pandemic recedes? What was the challenge? <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, initially we were on track to open uh, Mother's Day weekend of 2020 yeah. and and then the world fell apart. <laughs> so there was a lot of, you know, a, a lot of wait and see uh, during that winter or during that that summer, uh, ultimately opened September of 2020, uh, had a great couple months and then we got peeled back to 25 percent capacity. So, uh, you know, it's it's been it's been a lot of two steps forward, one step back along the way. But I, I think one really valuable part of what we went through during this period was, you know, finding new ways to think about what we can be to the community, um, and and seeing, you know, as you as you as you pivot and try to get through those more difficult months, and you you kind of strip things out of the concept, you you in the process discover the soul of the restaurant, and 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 you know what the what the core idea is that you're trying to protect. Um, you know, a lot of restaurants that operated one way all of a sudden became pizzerias for a year or more during the right. pandemic. And we, we didn't go that far. Uh, we tried to stay true to what we set out to do. Um, and I think in the process, now that we're, we're building, we're adding meal periods and days of operation, it's easier to look back to that period of tribulation and know what we actually are and what we wanna be. Well, well amazing. So you, let, you, had co you had opened this you know, restaurant in COVID. But you layer on the fact that the, the green room is the most iconic dining space, certainly in the state of Delaware, if not one of the top two or three in the Philadelphia region, right? Yeah. So you take it from fine dining, white tablecloth, and trying to convert it into more of a brasserie, new name, name change, and to have to layer all that in, there was a lot of stress. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you maybe sort of talk to us a little bit about what does it mean to be sort of like the local boy who went off law school working with the best, most well-renowned restaurants in the world to come back to your community, to the same space where didn't your grandmother used to bring you there for tea? Yeah. <laughs> I remember, <laughs> I remember times, when, yeah. when we first yeah. met and we were having that conversation, like, oh, this guy gets it. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, maybe talk a little bit about what it, what it has meant to come back to, you know, to really relaunch um, and re reimagine uh, the green room. Yeah, I, well, it meant the world to me. Um, as you know, I think that the first time I went out to dinner with you two, and found yeah. out about this project. It was like one of the most exciting nights of my life, truly. 
Uh, you wrote a beautiful letter <laughs> afterwards, <laughs> yeah, which yeah. I still have. I, yeah. Thank you so much. Well, I think, and, and look, I mean, all along the way, I, it felt like the stakes were so high, yeah. right? When we were talking about what to name the restaurant or oh my God. Uh, design. little design details yeah. that I think for a lot of other restaurants would just be sort of pedestrian pre-opening decisions. Um, for us, it felt so loaded. And I think that process uh, made us think about what the community is to us and what our memories of the green room are uh, or were and um, you know how, how these decisions that we were making um, would, would affect how the community interacts with the hotel, with that restaurant and, and how they perceive us at the end of the day. So it, it, was, it was a really, really interesting, really intellectually stimulating process um, and came out of it feeling like I had real friendships and now I'm living in Delaware again. <laughs> so that, that's, We're excited. I think, yeah. I think when we left the, the dinner, the first dinner that we had, I thought to myself, I may have mentioned to Chris, like, I think we have a chance of him moving home if this is successful. Obviously you have your restaurants in Philadelphia as well, but uh, we're, we're super proud that you're here with your family. Um, and I think, and Jimmy, you had been at Ulysses, you've been in the periphery or the perimeter of Wilmington, certainly not in the downtown. Um, kind of what was your perception when you were, had been working kind of in North Wilmington versus downtown Wilmington? Kind of what your perception is, how it's changed, and maybe talk a little about how you went from, we opened Maker's Alley up and then all of a sudden really it was just you. Uh, and then because in, in some ways earlier, you know, it used to be harder to get people to move from Philly to Wilmington than from North Wilmington to Wilmington. Yeah, exactly. so, so literally we, we, it was easier for us to find, you know, these celebrity chefs from Philly to open up in downtown Wilmington. It was easier than that to try to find someone. Because they, of, got, they got the fact, you know, right. pioneering great architecture, sense of place. They'd seen they, it in Philly. They, they'd seen it work in Philly. And right. so I think the Wilmington chefs and, and really the whole real estate community was very apprehensive about. Yeah. Yeah. Understandably so. Yeah. Well, at, Ulysses, uh, at Ulysses, I built uh, myself a, uh, a brand. Yeah. Um, I branched out of a small town in New Jersey, working at mom and pop places, um, decided I wanted to see what big bad Delaware had for me. <laughs> you know, and um, I, mean, I worked at Ulysses for five years, very successful. And Richard Snyder, our uh, yeah. vice president of food and beverage, he courted me for a while. He courted <laughs> me for a good couple months. And then finally, he was like, come talk to me. And I came to talk to him, and here we go. Well, like, Jimmy, we, you, you sort of transcend one restaurant. So, you know, um, as the enter, as BPG as a real estate company became more of an operating company focused on entertainment here in the city of Wilmington, we kept saying, all right, we need to have a, someone running all food and beverage and have some of our own concepts. And so, Jimmy, you were like a lifesaver because you came in at Maker's Alley and then you're running that and now you're running Wilma's and you're running the Queen Theater as well. And, and Deco. And, and Deco. <laughs> I mean, you've really helped in Deco. So in a very short amount of time, you went from zero to four <laughs> different establishments here. And you're really letting um, BPG come in and sort of fill in, you know, the blanks between all these incredible uh, restaurant pioneers like like the Tyler Aikens of the world. Yeah, we're appreciative. You know, you go from Le Cave where Tyler's running the ship there and then at the bottom of the street, obviously with the Lafia team, and having the ability to walk every few feet and see a new restaurant and see how uh, quality the interiors are and the food is, you know, it, it right. makes me uh, really excited about the future. Robin always, you know, people don't realize how much time we spend, you know, working with, you know, chef entrepreneurs and, and we'll spend more time working on a 3000 square foot restaurant uh, than we will on a big office lease. Because yeah. at the end of the day, you know, the Lafia that started, you know, a pioneer in a very small space on Lower Market Street, that probably had a bigger impact than building a new office building in downtown Wilmington because of what it does and what it, what it brings to the nights and weekends and days. Yeah. And, make, and making things destinational. And so, I think Jimmy, so we were open at Maker's Alley, all of a sudden, not very long, all of a sudden COVID hits, <laughs> you're like, I want to go back to Ulysses. <laughs> I, like, oh, I'm really, I'm really mad at Rich Snyder. Nah, <laughs> not, not at all. Back. I, mean, I really don't think I would have had a job if I would have stayed at Ulysses, to be honest. Um, but I did find myself alone on a 1962 Airstream, That's singing right. all by myself quite a bit. 
um, it was only open till eight, but I still had about two hours of work every night after eight o'clock of cleaning and answering phones. And eventually, for the first time, I learned how to set up Grubhub, you know, Uber Eats and all that. And I survived this, I guess it was a, a good, better part of six months yeah. there alone um, until we were allowed to have, what, 25% capacity back in. It's amazing. But, and, and, and Tyler, so here you are in Philly, one of the great, you know, gastro destinations of the world and making a bit of a pivot to Wilmington, mm -hmm. you know, um, and being in this sort of iconic space, uh, the Hotel de Pont, the Green Room, can you sort of tell us a little bit about maybe what have been some of the, you know, the biggest bright spots, maybe some of the, big, the bigger challenges as well? Uh, I mean, there have been so many bright spots, like I, literally every day walking into that restaurant is a source of pride and, uh, and joy. Um, it's, it's a privilege and, um, you know, you think about events that we've had along the way, you know, we're coming off uh, we, the last installment of this event series yeah. that has been running for the last four months will be this coming Thursday at Lafia, but... Um, the, the IRC, so yeah, actually it, maybe just please mention, us, mention yeah. about uh, the IRC and, sure. and the genius of you and Gia creating uh, these events in Wilmington. Well, it was, I, I think it was your idea in <laughs> fairness, but um, the, you know, so the beginning of the pandemic, as, as you know, the world was falling apart, um, a bunch of uh, restaurant operators and chefs around the country uh, realized that, you know, in order to fight for our interests, we, we needed to form our own group, um, which gave birth to the Independent Restaurant Coalition. Um, I, I'm, I'm on the board of that organization today. I've, I've, I've dedicated, you know, thousands of hours to it over the last two years. But, um, you know, what we found along the way is it costs a lot of money to have a voice in DC. So we're always in fundraising mode. Um, so when, when uh, Rob, you and Dave came to Gia and myself and said, you know, we've been talking about how Wilmington is all independent restaurants. Let's find a way to tell the story. And it made sense to you know, leverage that IRC relationship and, and do some good, raise some money. Uh, it became the IRC X Wilmington series, uh, which was a five part um, series of, of mostly dinners and one brunch, um, bringing in national celebrity chefs to pair up with uh, Market Street chefs here. And the chefs we've had so yeah. far. Ashley Christensen from Raleigh, North Carolina, Tom, Tom Colicchio, yeah. Andrew Zimmern, um, yesterday we had Russ and Daughters yeah. uh, coming up, Greg Gorday out of Portland. So just like um, really unbelievable. awesome, unbelievable. awesome folks, um, you know, a great cause. And, um, you know, so th those events have been a real highlight for me. And um, it really, I think, set us up to sprint out of COVID. And if we had the Atlantic 10 basketball championships here, seeing people coming in out of your restaurants, Jimmy, um, for the week that we hosted it. And we had Biden at the Hotel de Pont being uh, the president of the United States. eating lunch out of yeah. your kitchen. Come, yeah. Actually, I think coming into your kitchen in the, in the back way in the building, um, which we benefited tremendously, obviously, from the Joe Biden presidency. As soon as he took office, you know, we had the the, uh, uh, the city of Wilmington. The city of Wilmington, yes, the city of Wilmington um, for travel and leisure obviously Thrillist and Food and Wine and New York Magazine. I mean, Wall Street Journal, I mean, Vogue Magazine. Vogue Magazine. Yeah. I mean, it's been unbelievable the press that the restaurant scene has gotten here mm -hmm. in, uh, in Wilmington. It's received here in Wilmington. And uh, I'm really excited now. I think that's a, a adds to the, to the uh, talent that we have here, really making it visible. And, and uh, even, you know, we'll, we'll talk to Scott, Scott and Antimo from Bardea, you know, on uh, a Saturday night, they'll have a bunch of the uh, Washington Press Corps, you know, closing down the restaurant, uh, or at least the bar, which is great. So, Jimmy, in terms of kind of, you're in the Hotel de Pont this weekend, uh, at Deco, you've got Secret Service everywhere, a little bit different than you probably envisioned, I would think. Uh, I experienced the queen. the queen. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's right. Tell us what happened there. Oh, that was pretty awesome. I mean, cooking in the kitchen and just having a couple of secret service guys walking through and every once in a while I'll give you a see what, <laughs> see what you're cooking in there. But, 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 it, was, but it was unique. President uh, Biden, um, during his campaign, for about six months, mm -hmm. 
he took over the Queen Theater. That became sort of his his center of operations, right? And and you were there uh, for those six months for what every like. announcement, right? <laughs> Whether it be the Treasury Secretary, right, right. It was intense, and I saw some of the biggest German shepherds I've ever seen. <laughs> <in the town. laughs> well, and and Tyler, thank you because I mean I think your commitment to coming back to Wilmington and to really reimagining, you know, quarterbacking the reimagination of the green room is really, there's um, a direct correlation between that and, and all the, the national press, probably some international press, that Wilmington. And it was sort of like, it was just the perfect timing where with the Biden presidency and, and really Wilmington becoming this food destination, um, that you were able to really help us, you know, tell the story on a national level. So. You know, thank you for all you've done on that. It's thank you. Turning Wilmington around forever. Forever. It's been my privilege. <laughs> all right. And and only only because of you guys. Yeah, yeah. 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 We love we love working with you all, um, and uh, it's just so wonderful to work with the best in class talent. And uh, who would have thought that when we started, uh, you know, twelve years ago, as as uh, Joe Van Horn had mentioned. So really. Despite the challenges of the restaurant industry, it's probably the most fun that, thing that Rob and I do in any given week. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you all for joining us today. Please make sure to check out all of these restaurants mentioned and please support Downtown Dine. And follow us on social media at Puccini Poland and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time on Field Notes with Rob and Chris.